called in a I just called in a, a bull from about I don't know half a mile away. I've been in here since about three o'clock. I didn't want to call at my water hole till about between six and eight is when it happens. And I waited till six and I said, you know what, I wait fifteen more minutes and the wind started dying down. So I hit my call one time, sat there for about five seconds, and then Mir, Mir hit it twice and he fired up straight across from me where I needed him to come from. My wind's been blowing this way, this way, and some this way. And so I've been fighting and I've got my ozonics here and everything. When he bugled out in front of me, I shut down my side windows on my Crivo. I only had my front windows open and I got Mozonix pointing out my front window in case it, dra it drafts back a little bit. I'm on a pond, you'll probably see it in the video. But he bugles and he bugles. And I, I, he bugled like four or five times and I didn't want to like get in a, talking a bunch with him because I'm on a water hole so he knows where she's probably at. Finally he roared at me one time and I called right on the end of his roar and then he roared immediately again, bugled again. And then I just put my call down and I was binocular in that whole tree line over there. I'll show you in a minute. And I could not find him. And then finally he started screaming and he was coming across this long meadow. And he's not a giant bull. He's a heavy five by five. There's a lot of five by fives on this ranch. But he came in across that field with his horns looking all golden. And he just looked awesome. And I said, if he comes in there to this hole, and he gives me a good shot. It's got to be close. I'm not going to take any long shots. I lost a bull last year at 45 yards. I hit him a little high. This is the first bull I've ever shot that I'm pretty sure he, I thought I heard him go down over there. He ran out across the meadow. You'll see in the video, it's kind of a little shaky because I'm going nuts, but he goes across the, the, the meadow and he's stumbling and he's, and I give him a weak at with my mouth just a mirror to try to stop him to see if he'll fall in view, but he went around and I heard some rocks. So I immediately bailed out, went into the trees behind me in case he was still standing up there, he couldn't see me. And I looped around a little bit. And I couldn't quite see him. Looped a little further around. I'm deep in some trees and then I'm in a ravine looking over this tank dam. And he's laying right over there. My first bull elk, he's not a giant but he's actually a pretty big five by five. If he would have been a little raggedy five by five, I wouldn't have shot him, but he looked pretty good. Plus I called him, he answered, he answered, he answered, he answered. I called, he screamed one more time and then he was coming and I put my call down. Let's go, let's go look at him while we got some daylight. All right. And by the way, in a Crivo vine in New Mexico, I sent eight up here. I've hunted in two of them. Killed my first elk out of one of my own blinds that I built. So it's a pretty good day. All right. All right. There's the blind. I'll go slow so we don't get sick. Looky there. <laughs> well, I'm so excited. It's gonna be quick, it's gonna be short, I'm by myself. There's another elk bugle behind the blind, that's why I wanted to get out real quick so that I'm not over there. I'm a good 600 yards from there and I'm just gonna sneak out from the road here and wait for my ride. That way if something wants to come into the pond, it can. But, just gorgeous, just gorgeous. I'm so excited. I'm glad I brought my video camera so you could see it and hopefully my boys will enjoy it. They love watching dad do what dad likes to do. So, but uh, anyway, battery's out. We'll get more pictures.